Welcome to Home Ties, a podcast about staying connected to home, no matter where you are. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are not necessarily those of the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod. Welcome to Home Ties. Today we have a special guest in the studio. It's my daughter, Lily Repke. Actually, she's not in the studio physically with me. She's in the United States while I'm here in Malawi. But we are connected to each other over Zoom, which everybody has discovered in the last year. And it's a wonderful tool, a wonderful way to stay in touch with people, and even record podcasts. So say hi to everybody, Lily. Hello. It's nice yeah. to be here today. Good to have you with us. So let me uh, just set this up a little bit before we get started. I uh, sent Lily some questions ahead of time so we'd know what we were going to talk about in our episode today. Um, and uh, just to tell you a little bit about Lily, Lily is – 23 years old. She was born in the country of Bulgaria back in 1997 and has uh, been a part of our life ever since. And even though we're separated by so many hundreds of miles from her, we're still a huge part of her life and just so glad that she can help me with my podcast this week. Um, so, Let's get into our interview today. I'm going to be asking Lily some questions about growing up overseas and coming back to the United States, and um, hopefully we'll be able to get some insights for anybody else who's in those similar situation. So like I said uh, before, you were born in the small Eastern European country of Bulgaria, a country which maybe a lot of people haven't even heard about or know much about it. But you lived there for six years. Um, tell me, what do you remember about living in Bulgaria? I remember visiting uh, my friend Vicky, the neighbor, and she had a fox scarf that we would play with, and it looked really realistic. And then I remember also playing with my sister at the playground, and there was metal swings and also a stone slide, and also... When we were in an apartment, there was music that would play when we'd open the windows. Yeah, we kept the windows open because it was so hot. And we lived there in the summertime. And there was no air conditioning, of course. <laughs> but you keep the windows open, then, of course, you hear the bar music all the time. Um, you went to a Bulgarian preschool for a couple of years. In fact, I know we've got some videos from you when you were performing with the other Bulgarian kids in some programs. What do you remember about preschool? I remember when we had to learn dances and that we got to have a different type of toilet than you would think of in the U.S. It was like a pit toilet, so like a hole in the ground. What did you think when you were, when you saw that for the first time? Did that freak you out or did you just like, think oh this is different oh well i think most of our apartments had the regular kind of toilet so it was a little bit different to get used to but then i just got used to it have you ever used a pit toilet since then um i think maybe when i visited malawi that bring back some good memories <laughs> um, <laughs> it's funny um you know so you were in preschool and it's funny you know you were in a school where they taught in bulgarian the teachers didn't speak english with you or with any of the other kids so you were just like any other little bulgarche they would teach talk to you and teach you the songs in bulgarian and you'd be talking bulgarian right back to them but then when your parents showed up you flipped right over to English and started talking in English. That's amazing. 
Do you, do you remember at all what that was like speaking two different languages? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember any Bulgarian today? A couple phrases. Some words from when I watched Stuart Little um, in Bulgarian and some other movies that were American that we watched in Bulgarian. I remember like some certain words from it. And then okay. I'm better at just listening when you or mom will speak it mm -hmm. sometimes. And I can remember yeah. like what certain things mean just by listening, but not really by uh, speaking. Just curious, have you ever gone on the internet to look up like Bulgarian TV or websites or YouTube? I've tried to listen to some of the Bulgarian songs when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And do you understand some of it? Mm, a little bit, but it's easier when it's like spoken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's 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 in your brain somewhere. It's just bringing it back is the hard part. That's for sure. All right. So then, Lily, when uh, you were six years old, you moved back to the United States with your mom and me and your sister. And, you know, for your mom and me, it was going back home, right? But for you, the United States was really a different country. I mean, do you remember any of the vacations that we took back in the United States when we still lived in Bulgaria? I don't remember, but I remember looking at um, my grandma, Gripentrog, her picture album, and I see pictures of... Um, of us waving goodbye, like when we're loading the car up mm -hmm. and just seeing how like we have to go back and it kind of looks like you and mom are a little sad to say bye and we're just like kids. So we don't really understand what's happening. Yeah, it's true. It wasn't easy to leave the parents behind. Um, we had a joint birthday party for you and your sister once. I don't know if you, do you remember that at all? We had it yeah. like, set up in the garage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a big deal. A bunch of relatives came over. But I mean, still, you. so your memories of uh, the United States was it's a cool place to visit. And there's people who and love you there. Parents. Right. But that's not really where you lived. And then you moved there. And what was that like? Uh, what do you remember about living in Wisconsin? We only lived there for four years. What are some of the things that you remember about living there? I remember making new friends and learning more how to read in English and going to the summer library program. In this, and we had to read books, and if we read a certain amount, then we could qualify to get a prize. And my sister got like a beanie baby rabbit. And then we also, since we was a small town, we took a sled one time when it was snowing and just uh, had the books piled in the sled and like also were just by a duck pond. And we got to see like a lot of things. It was within walking distance, a little bit like in Bulgaria in the small, mm -hmm. like in beating where we could walk where different things were. It's true. We, we lived in a small town of Watoma, Wisconsin. Um, and you and your sister both liked to read lots of books. You were big readers for sure. And, but those, and that whole time went by really fast, didn't it? Yeah. Do you remember, do you remember anything about raking leaves or working on that big yard that we had? I remember that we had to, have a lot of leaves to put away in the fall and that we couldn't really like mess up the leaves that much like once we made the piles because we were trying to like put them away but we like playing in the leaves too mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah that was a lot of trees on that property and Lots there was a deer there was a deer one time that came up by the house that's right and those deer so used to like to and turkeys too. I think we saw turkeys in our backyard or, or, or uh, sand cranes. It was like we were living in the middle of the forest, but we were in town. 
and those dumb deer kept eating my potato plants. Ah, I guess I'm just not much of a farmer like your grandpa Gordy. <laughs> so that was the four years we spent in Wisconsin. And then in 2008, we moved all the way to Huntsville, Alabama. So what was it like moving from Wisconsin, which is in the north part of the United States, to Alabama, which is in the southern part of the United States? Well, when we left Wisconsin, it was a lot of snow that was still on the ground. And when we got to Alabama, within the first week we were there, there was a, a tornado drill at my school where we had to stay extra at school to wait for the thing to pass over. It was actual watch or a warning, but they just caught, had the first time where I had to like duck um, on my knees and cover my head in the hallway. That must have been a frightening experience. I don't think you ever had to do that in yeah. Wachoma. You never had to do that in Wisconsin, did you? Mm -mm. Yeah. See, I grew and up as in I the... was growing up, like, through middle school, when high school, mm -hmm. we had to do that. Yep. See, I, I grew up in uh, a, the state of Nebraska, and it's the same kind of deal there as in Alabama. There's tornadoes all the time. So for me, going to Alabama and the whole tornado thing – that wasn't that big of a weird thing, but for you, it must have been pretty scary, at least at first. And then we had that big tornado in, was it 2010, right? 2011? 2011, yeah. We had that big F5 tornado, and the power went out for the whole week. That was scary. But uh, what do you, okay, what do you remember about uh, going to school in Alabama that was different from going to school in Wisconsin? One of my teachers insisted that everyone say yes, ma'am, or no, ma'am in the classroom. And if you had a question, like, you would have to say, what did you say, ma'am? And, like, can you repeat yourself, ma'am? And it was a different type of rules and manners. That must have seemed a little odd at first. Yeah. At first, I didn't know what she was trying to get me to say because she asked me to repeat my question, and then I did. But then she was like, I didn't understand what she was trying to get me to say, but she was just trying to get me to say my question with ma'am at the end. Did she make you do any push-ups? No. So it wasn't totally like being in the army. <laughs> and a lot of the teachers weren't like that, but she was from Athens, Alabama, which mm -hmm. is not like as big as the city of Huntsville, which is more traditional Southern. Mm -hmm. There's lots of Yankees in Huntsville, aren't there? They were in Huntsville. It was either like local people or people who were used to moving around a lot. And most mm -hmm. of the people I knew moved around a lot. And when they got done with college or high school in Alabama, in Huntsville, they would move somewhere else. So a lot of my friends from college didn't stay in Huntsville after they finished mm -hmm. in Huntsville. Yeah, that was a, a community where people were coming and going all the time. Like, uh, like Washington, D.C., or really any big city in the United States. A lot different from uh, Watoma, where people probably, there's probably some of the people you went to school with in grade school that are still living there. What are some of the other things you enjoyed doing down in Alabama? I volunteered at the Botanical Gardens where there was a bunch of different plants and we did things with kids called Wacky Wednesdays where we would help with crafts or like we would have them play in the sprinklers and give them like some ice cream or other treats while teaching them a little bit about the garden. Mm -hmm. And we'd also do some replanting and potting and pulling weeds, a lot of different fun things in the summer activities when it was warmer. 
Yeah. We went it, camping as well. Yeah, we got to go to some pretty interesting places, didn't we? Got to go to Fort Payne and at Cloud Canyon in Helen, Georgia. It's beautiful down there. And we got to go to Montesano. And Montesano, that's right. Yeah. And Bert on the Mountain. Mm-hmm. You and you enjoy the outdoors? You like to camp out outside? Yes. Okay. What were some of the ch the the not so fun things about moving to Alabama other than tornadoes? It was hard <laughs> because like everybody was transplants mostly, but they at least had a few relatives that lived at least somewhere nearby and because I was from Wisconsin, but not really. It was hard to really know where I was from because my family, like extended family, grandparents were like pretty much Wisconsin locals in my mind, but I was pretty much a person that had lived in Alabama for a majority of my life since age 10, but still was like told like, where are you from? Even though I felt like I qualified as a local if I'd been there like more than half my life. Yeah, I don't think you can call yourself from Alabama unless you were born there. <laughs> I don't know. That's the thing about that is the thing about a lot of these about any about any place, right? Where you're from is where you were born. If you stayed there, then it's easy to answer that question. But if you didn't stay there, it's tricky. So um in the year two thousand seventeen your mom and I moved to Malawi, and you stayed behind in the United States, and you chose to remain in Alabama, though, even though, as you've mentioned, all of your family or most of your family lives in Wisconsin. So you didn't really have any close relatives or anybody behind there in Alabama, and you stayed there, was it two years, two or three years? How long were you there? By yourself um, from 2017 to early 2000. I mean, you mean 2000, 2020. 2020. Yeah, so almost Sorry. three years. Almost three years. Um, and then you you were able to pay us a couple of visits in Malawi. We really we're just so thankful that you were able to come and visit us um, here and see what it's like for us to be here. What made an impression on you when you came to visit us in Malawi? It was very green because it was in the rainy season because I was visiting in December. So I went from it being colder in Alabama and rainy and dry to it being more like summer. And it was like really beautiful and green. And when we went to a wildlife preserve, there were a bunch of different animals that I'd only seen pictures of in like National Geographic or on a wildlife show. And it was just really cool to see that like real life. Yeah, me too. I think I remember the one I remember the most is the elephant that uh, charged our, our Land Rover that we were driving in. <laughs> uh, he was trumpeting at us and everything. And I got him on video. Thankfully, he took off, but that was that was interesting. There's no uh, cages between you and the animals in those game parks. Um, what surprised you about Malawi? It was surprising to me how welcoming they were of me just because they know you and mom and how hospitality was really big. Are you like, talking? I got invited after church to a pastor's home just to have um, lunch with him, even though he didn't really know me as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, it's a really great blessing for us to have our f colleagues here because we don't have any family, obviously, living with us in Malawi, but we've got our fellow missionaries who are like our extended family and we get really close to them. And that's been a great thing for us. 
Um, now, your mom and I always have this argument. It's not a real serious argument, but we always argue when we get talking about the, the theme of where I'm from. Your mom says that I'm from Wisconsin because, you know, my ancestors all lived there, but I didn't grow up in Wisconsin. I grew up in uh, Nebraska and I moved to Wisconsin as a teenager. So I don't necessarily think of Wisconsin as my home. I did enjoy getting to know my Wisconsin relatives when we moved back to be there, but I don't know that I consider it my home. So I guess that's my question for you. What, where is the place that you consider your home? Whenever people ask, I just usually say, like, it's where my family is. So if I go visit my sister that's in Milwaukee, then when I'm spending time with her, that's what my home is. Even mm -hmm. if I visit in Malawi, even though that's not where I grew up, because my parents are there, that's my home. Wherever my loved ones are, that's my home. But when people ask where I'm from, I'll usually just say everywhere because I haven't really stayed in one place, I don't think, long enough to be considered anywhere where I grew up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, since you've been back in Wisconsin, what are some of your best experiences? It's been really nice to see my grandparents. I saw them for Easter and my extended cousins and aunt or uncle and to just reconnect with them since in, when I was in Alabama, I could see them less often and now I can see them for most of the holidays. Yeah, I'm glad that you were able to do that. Now you live in the city of Madison, Wisconsin, and most of your uh, Wisconsin relatives live up in the Fox Cities area, Appleton, Green Bay, but and you have a sister that lives in Milwaukee, so you're not that far away, but still, you don't, it's not like you see your grandparents every weekend, right? Yeah, but to me, it feels closer than when I lived in Alabama and only saw them once every year or once every other year. Right, right. Well, just keep visiting them. I know they like having you as their guest. Um, when you think about the future, you know, obviously nobody knows what's going to happen, but do you think you would like to move around in the future? Maybe leave Madison, go someplace else, or would you like to, do you think you've just had enough of this gypsy lifestyle and you want to just settle down and be in one place and call that your home? Any thoughts on that? For right now, I'd like to stay in the Wisconsin area just so I can have time with grandparents. But maybe in the future, as they're older and pass eventually, then I could be probably more likely to move if family's no longer here. But I would move just if there was a better opportunity. But I do like staying closer to family. It would a lot depend as well if I want to be closer to my sister where she finds a job. If I want to find a job that's closer to her since she's the closest family I have that's immediate. Yeah, so you, for you, maybe it's like wherever the family is, you said that's how you consider your home. So if your sister moves around, you move with her. Or if your parents move around, you move with them. But someday, you know, God willing, you'll settle down and have a family of your own. Then it really, then maybe you really will start to feel like you have a home when you have your own family and your own house. You ever think about that? Yeah, if I have my own house then I'll kind of start my own family on my mm -hmm. own. And then maybe once I do that, then I'll be more likely to put down roots. Yeah. Maybe it will be easier for you to answer that question, where are you from or where is your home? Mm -hmm. You know, I really uh, feel envious in some ways of uh, your Aunt Jenny and Uncle Mark. They've pretty much uh, lived in the same area part of the country their whole lives 
And I, there's no way they would ever move away uh, to go to a, another country, much less another city. Um, I just can't even imagine what that is like to be in the same place for so many years. So how do you like living on your own? You got your own job, you got your own apartment. How's it going there? Oh, uh, I like living on my own because when, if I stayed with family the whole time, it'd probably be a little bit like I want to feel like I spread my own wings and do something independent. Spoken like a true American. <laughs> But, you know, you were on your own for almost three years in Alabama, so that would be hard to, to go back and live under your grandma's roof or even to live under your parents' roof, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, when I moved away from home and went to college for the first time, I hate to admit it, but it's like I, I'd never looked back. I never for a, a minute felt homesick. Or felt like, you know, I needed to, to go back home. And your mom never felt that way either. I don't know if that's just us and our personality uh, or that was the way our generation was. Um, now, the funny thing for you is that you didn't move away from us. We moved away from you. So what is that? What is our decision to move away to Africa forced you to do? What have you had to do as a result of us moving away? Well, the fact, that you moved, the fact that you moved away before I moved away kind of made it like instead of I move away when I'm comfortable and I want to be on my own, it's like, oh, I have no choice, but I have to be on my own. So there's mm -hmm. less of a time, I guess, to prepare for being on your own. Do you think that uh, people in your generation are more closely tied to their parents? Yes. Um, some people like are more comfortable than in previous generations of staying with their parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of it might be financial reasons because like they're able to live in their home and save money while they save mm -hmm. for a home of their own. Yeah. What do you miss the most about when our family was together? I miss having dinner together or going on family walks. Also just uh, talking or praying together at the end of the day, just to talk more and see how everything's going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I miss that too. You know, um, you mentioned before you like to go camping. I enjoyed the camping. I enjoyed doing stuff outdoors, summer camps down in Georgia. Um, I enjoyed taking you and your sister camping uh, when you even when you were little kids, taking you to uh, Devil's Lake, and you went to Devil's Lake, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I went back um recently over the last summer with um some mm -hmm. people from my church. Yeah. It was nice to go back, and I think I remembered some of it. Did you? Did you? Do they still have like? Well, you. I'm sure they still do. But did you hike up to the top of that pile of rocks? I think it was some. Like, yeah, some kind there of... wasn't railing for some of it. It was just like pile of rocks that was sort of like a staircase yeah that was pretty crazy that i took a, a seven-year-old and a five-year-old up there by myself wasn't it that was pretty irresponsible <laughs> no we're responsible kids so we listen to you if you said to not do something i say hey let's jump off the cliff you'd say sure dad <laughs> uh, well you know now that your mom and i are older we've definitely gotten softer we're not into camping so much anymore but, hey, who knows, maybe someday you'll take your own family camping someday. Or you might pass on some other interests that you have to the next generation. It's kind of, it's interesting to hear you tell me that you like doing these things that we did together as a family. I guess at the time I never thought that 
what I was doing would really be something that would stick with you. Then again, we, you might, we, you might do something with your kids that your kids totally hate. <laughs> so they, so they do the opposite. Who knows? So I think this is really cool that we can uh, do this over Zoom, uh, to, to have this, this podcast episode and, and really we touch base with you every week. Um, how has uh, social media helped you stay connected to uh, not only your mom and me, but other people who are important to you in your life? Well, with my sister, I can see what she's up to with Snapchat if she shares pictures of things she finds interesting. And also on Snapchat, you can, if you want to, share your location with your friends so I can see where she is and what she's like doing more. So we can still kind of feel connected. So when I went to visit my grandparents, I could see like where exactly she was on the way. Mm -hmm. How about your uh, classmates and your friends from high school and college? I can see any like life updates, like if they're getting married or having a family or even my high school teachers, I can see like what they're up to. You ever think you and your sister would like to take a trip back to Alabama to see some of those people? I think we would. We have to have a good reason to go back. Maybe when Lama God has their 20th anniversary, they'll invite us to come back, huh? You know, uh, we didn't have social media when your mom and I went to Bulgaria. In fact, to make a phone call, it cost like a dollar a minute. Can you believe that? Hmm. Yeah. And email was just getting started. That was back in 1994 when we were there. And it took a whole minute to load just one web page. <laughs> so um, you've definitely got more advantages today than we did then. But here's the thing that I've noticed that because of these technological advances, it's harder for me to connect with people here in my, in my neighborhood, my, the people that I live with here every day, because I'm, I'm so closely connected with other people through social media. Um, what have you noticed about this phenomenon of, of trying to get connected to your neighbors or people who are like living in the same street as you versus staying connected to other people. It's harder if people have different schedules and people have different times that they prefer being outside as well with people moving so much nowadays to have consistent neighbors. You might get to know your neighbor, but then when they have a new neighbor come in, then it's like, oh, you don't get to meet a new person. It was hard to get to know the neighbors in Alabama, I know, especially in that first neighborhood we lived in. I think one time I just started knocking on doors, introducing myself to people in the neighborhood. And I know at the other place in Trey Hughes we lived, we used to hand out cookies and things for the holidays. I don't know if people thought that was weird or not. If people started doing that in your neighborhood, would they call the police on them? <laughs> um, no, because at the apartment I'm at, uh, my roommate has been at the apartment for um several years perhaps mm -hmm. more than 10 i think yeah. and okay. she's like well known because she's been there so long so she has the neighbors that she knows that have been there mm -hmm. for a long time not as long as her but mm -hmm. she's more like established so because i'm her roommate people are starting to get to know me better too mm -hmm. just because they know her so well so i think they're more accepting since it's a smaller type Mm -hmm. apartment to learn people they have four apartments in one building and then probably like 11 or 12 different buildings okay yeah that helps if you have people who have been living there for a long time i know covid has made everything difficult they probably don't let you have like common gatherings or anything like that right or picnics no yeah 
I'm sure they did that before COVID though, probably had some events that they organized for the whole community there. Yeah, my roommate mentioned that they have summer concerts not far away, not too far away from where mm -hmm. the apartment is that a lot of people will come and attend in well, the park. Maybe, maybe that'll start up again. Who knows? If enough people get vaccinated and the rates of infection go down far enough, maybe they'll open that up again. We'll have to wait and see. Um, let's talk about uh, church. What role has the church helped you in staying connected to God and to other people? Well, the church has been like a constant thing in my life when everything else is changing. And it's helped me to meet people that have the same views as me and mm -hmm. that believe in God. And we have all of the same fellowship of the same goal. And we all know that Jesus died for us. And he, especially young professionals at group I'm involved in at church, it helps me like see other people my age that have like similar highs and lows. We do high and low for the week. And then we can also discuss um, Bible passages and that's question based on what we read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. I'm so happy for you that you have a group like that. The church um, has that you go to is pretty big church and has it's a university town. So there's lots of uh, college age students there. That's a wonderful thing that you can find people your age who are your fellow Christians. Let me ask you this uh, last question, Lily. What's different about going to church now since I'm not your pastor anymore? Um. It's like I'm not as involved because I kind of had to be involved when I was there early. <laughs> <laughs> so I would help set everything up and do that kind of thing. And now it's like I still help with stuff, but it's not as like directly involved and I don't have all the inner secrets of stuff happening as much. The inner secrets you know where the bodies are buried Come i just on, didn't... know how everything i don't know how everything gets set up before i arrive now i just arrived to church and everything's already set up and i don't really know how everything gets put away and put together and yeah you got it easy you know it's, that's a city church so there's not any yard to rake or grass to cut or uh bushes that you have to trim right you don't have to set up the tables every Sunday for Bible class or, oh, so many things that we did in that little church. Makes me tired just thinking about it all. Those are some good memories though. We were, we were working pretty hard, weren't we? Mm -hmm. So do you think you'd rather go to a big church or a small church someday? Mm -hmm. um, I like the size that my church is. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it would be considered big or small. Well, you have a what, a couple hundred members there, right? A couple mm -hmm. hundred people come to church. That's it's bigger than where we were in Alabama. I like how there's more like focused small groups. Like at mm -hmm. um, a smaller church, there's less people, so some age groups might not have as many people that are together, so it might mm -hmm. be harder. And I like mm -hmm. how at my church, even though it's like a lot of college ministry focus, there are older people and they help support the whole ministry of the campus. And they like can also mentor the younger people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, again, Lily, I just want to thank you for uh, giving me your time and uh, helping me with this episode on my podcast. It's been uh it's been an experiment for me doing this podcast, talking about what it's like to live in different places and trying to figure out how, where do you belong. But one thing I've, I guess I've come to learn and appreciate is that I'm not the only person who's had to go through this. There's a lot of other people like me and like you who struggle with trying to figure out who they are, where they come from. But the thing about the Christian faith, it tells us we're, where we're all headed, right? The Bible said something to the effect that, well, 
people on this earth, they're like, uh, they're camping, <laughs> moving their tents around from place to place. But we're looking forward to living in a city someday that has a permanent foundation. And I'm looking forward to being there with you someday. Any final words uh, for the audience? Um, bloom where you're planted. <laughs> bloom where you're planted. That's it's maybe a cliche, but it's a good one. That's a good good advice. All right. Thanks, Lily.